Hello, hello! I'm back! Okay, so sorry about the long time it's taking between episodes. Um, a, um, I'm setting up the next episode and it's a little bit more involved with, you know, creating the back-end content and stuff for showing on screen and explaining what I'm talking about and all that, so that's in the works. But in the meantime, I wanted to address an issue I've been running into with this drive here. So this bottom drive is the one I've been using in the videos. It has since stopped reading most of my discs. And then it just goes into an infinite loop. Um, I'm guessing it just needs a bit of a head clean. Um, I since bought this one in the meantime. This one was just one I found cheap on eBay. It has been working. Um, but yeah, I wanted to maybe do a little bit of a supplementary video. I'm going to take this guy apart. We're going to clean it um, and make sure that it works. So... Uh, yeah, let me cut this camera. We'll get it here on the bench. We'll take it apart. We'll clean the head. We'll put it back together. All right, so I got the drives out. Um, this one here on the left in the lighter shade of tan is the one having issues. Um, it's the one my floppy emu is still connected to. So we're going to carefully remove that and set this to the side. Awesome. And we can set this other working drive um, to the side as well. I'm not going to be using or needing that right now. And we are left with just this drive right here. Awesome. So um, let's go ahead and start taking this guy apart. I got my trusty screwdriver. Um, there are four screws on the back. Just take those off. And it should be pretty easy to get to all the screws in here. Um, it's such an old piece of kit. They really had. Um, you know, servicing in mind. It's not like these days where Apple, you know, locks everything down. So it's relatively serviceable, which is a breath of fresh air. Awesome. So let me uh, get these screws over to the side here to keep track of them. And um, we have two more screws on the back. So there's a screw deep down in there, and there's a screw deep down in there. And it doesn't feel like anybody's been in here. Um, some of these screws, like when I, uh, when I turn it, it has that bit of a crack, like it's, you know, crusted over and sealed for 30 years, so good sign, I guess, that it really didn't have any failures during its lifetime, maybe. Although some would argue that if it was serviced um, sometime within its lifetime, it may not have failed on me now, so. Awesome. Well, let's get this screw out of here. Set that to the side as well. Uh, flip this guy around. So this whole enclosure is retained at the front, and it basically lifts up from the back and pulls out. So I'm going to try to do that here. I'm gonna face it a bit towards me. I'm going to kind of you know, lift it up a bit. I don't think it's getting caught on anything. Okay. It's relatively uh, loose. And now you can basically pull it from the back. And it lifts out. And we can set that to the side. Um, it's relatively clean. Um, I don't see any, you know, soda gunk or anything on the edge. So nothing really needs to be done there. Um, awesome. So we are here. Uh, let me tilt the camera just a little bit closer. I don't know if it's going to be the best view once we start getting into looking at the internals. So let me cut it here and I'll be right back. All right, so hopefully this closer angle is a bit better once we start getting this cover off. All right, so um, the next screw, um, this whole top part comes off. So this single screw at the back will allow this to lift up. So let me get this screw off. Oh, it's, a, it's kind of in there. I really don't want to strip it, so I use quite a bit of pressure here. Slow and steady should win the race, although that's really not budging. <laughs> Let me get a different screwdriver real quick. All right, I got maybe a bit of a heftier screwdriver here. Um, let's see if this bit works, if it's a good size. Yeah, that's slotted in there pretty good. Let me... Get a bit of, oh, there we go. If you heard that crack, um, yeah, that was kind of cemented in there pretty good. But yeah, slow and steady wins the race with these things. When you get a screw that is really, really tough, um, you basically want to form fit that Phillips head or, you know, flat head in that head as much as possible. You don't want something that's sharp and thin getting in there because you're just going to round off those corners. So something beefy that really 
conforms to the head as much as possible. A lot of surface area contact is great. And then you just want to, you know, steady but firm pressure. Don't feel that it's not budging and try to add more pressure. Just continue your pressure and it should eventually give, which it did in this case. Okay, so um, this comes off back ways, so it lifts off the back. And then these parts in the front, you have to basically push it forward a bit and it comes off this little latch clip or, you know, a little divot in the metal because there are uh, little retaining edges that slot in and, uh, yeah, you have to push it forward to get it up. So let me set that to the side. Um, we should take note that this grounding lead is on this little position that we took off and it looks like the angle at which it's sitting is pretty heavily towards the left. So I just want to kind of keep that in the back of my mind for reassembly. Okay, so we can, you know, tilt that to the side for now. Um, and okay, we're in. So if we take a look at here, it's pretty clean on the top, um, but there's a few screws here on the corners that look like um, this assembly comes off with, and then there's some connectors we got to deal with. So uh, let's just, you know, take note of the orientation of the connectors. So it looks like this whole wire assembly, all this coil is pretty heavily centered towards the left, the inner part, the inner part of the drive. So we want to remember the orientation of this before we take it off. So let me just go ahead and pull that. And then it looks like um, this one is pretty much the same deal, but it, it has a number printed on the top, and I assume there's not going to be one printed on the bottom, so that's going to be an easy way of remembering this one. Oh, and now that I take it off, it looks like it's a bit of a unique pin pattern, and it's, yeah, that's mirrored in the, in the connector as well. So that one's going to be easy to remember because it forces us to plug it in the right way. Um, this one has a bit of a, a wire loom retainer here. It looks like this pretty much just pulls out. So this just kind of... It's giving me issue, but it should just be a matter of bending that plastic retaining thing away to kind of free it up. And the last one is this um, LED connector. Um, let me zoom in yet once again, just to kind of get a better look at how that connector is connected. Okay, so hopefully you can see a bit better now. Um, I do kind of want to give a, a bit of a profile um, shot here, to, just so we can kind of see how it's clipped on. So it, it looks like this part is the connector. It ends at about here. Um, and this little wing that's sandwiched in between this wing on top, is the actual clip retainer. So that wing has to come up and this connector will then push out. So it looks like this little um, wing is the thing that retains this bottom wing. So I just want to focus on lifting that up and pulling this out. I don't know if it's going to get a good shot while I'm doing that. So I just wanted to kind of pre-game you with, you know, what it looks like and what I'm about to try to do. Okay, I don't know if this is the best angle or not, but I uh, got as close as I can with this uh, lens that I changed on here, um, just so that my pulling hand wasn't, you know, in the way of the frame. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to, you know, tilt this connector up and down to maybe get a, get a space here at the back, so I, I can then use my screwdriver as a pry to then push the connector forward as I'm using my hand to finagle the little clasps uh, away from each other. So I'm going to do a bit of a lift action to get my screwdriver in there. And now I'm going to keep pressure on this as sort of a pry force going that way while I, you know, finagle this around. Maybe tilt it back and forth. Okay, and that seemed to that seemed to do the business. And we're free. Um, I don't know if that was the best way to do it. Um, that just seemed logical with, you know, the tools I had and, you know, trying not to break any of this plastic. It's it's seemingly pretty malleable. Um, as old as it is, it's not really a brittle plastic, so it 
seem to come off without it, any, any uh, real hitches. Okay, so connectors are off um, back at the other lens, so it's a little bit more of a, a wide close-up. And uh, let's get this whole top um, circuit board off. Um, so the next screws in line are going to be these two at the back. So there's going to be that one on that corner and that one on that corner. And we basically do the same as we've been doing. I'm going to set these screws in a different location so we can kind of keep track of them. Set these over to the side here. And it looks like this whole thing comes out, comes up and out. So there's going to be, again, little retainers. Um, this little metal retainer slots in this board, so I can't just lift up the front. Like, it would be nice if this just lifted up and out, but it looks like it has to lift up from the back and slide this way. Um, but it looks like there are little cutouts in the board that retain these wires, and that's preventing me from just trying to pull it straight back because this, this wire's in the way. So let's basically lift it up if we can. I don't see anything that's holding it up per se. If we can pull it back enough, we can lift up the front. So let me just try to do that. I'm gonna pull it back, get the front off, and then it looks like we can kind of take this whole board out. Um, the only thing holding it in, I think, is this little grommet. I'm going to take that grommet out of its little slot, and this should... Oh, there's one more screw left. Sorry, there's a ground right here. That's what's been holding me up. But in theory, um, that's kind of correct. So let's take that out. We can now take this whole board off and set that to the side. Okay, and I'm at the point now where I have so many screws out of this machine. Um, if I can, I want to put these screws back in the holes in which they came out of. So I'm just going to quickly put this guy back where I found him. Um, and yeah, let's kind of assess and see what le we have left. So there's a little insulator here. Um, that's just so the circuit board doesn't touch metal underneath. You can set that to the side. Um, and let's just kind of try to find out where the head is. The, uh, the head is in here somewhere. Obviously, you'd be putting floppy drift, uh, dr disks in this way. And the head should be somewhere back here. So I'm guessing under, underneath this little sheet, there's uh, probably going to be a head in there. So let's go ahead and take this little sheet off. And it looks like it just has um, a screw back here. Um, let me take this other screw out that I thought I was doing good putting back. It looks like it's not the point in time in which it needs to go back home. We need to take this little grounding lug off. Oh, and we have another stubborn screw. So let me switch over to the big one. Constant but firm pressure. There it goes. Again, you don't want to force it through. You don't want to try to follow through with adding more force. Just give it a lot of force and hold that force on it, it should slowly, slowly um, eat through the, the bind it has and it will crack and let you spin it. So awesome, let's take this off. Make sure that the wires here are not getting cut or caught. Set that to the side. And now we're at the point where I wanna save this little guy and put him back where he lives, right here. And I want that other screw and put him back where he lives. Yeah, so we can kind of keep track of everything. Okay, so it looks like we're we're there. So this here is the is the mechanism that reads the head. So let me kind of get in here. There is the head down there. So we can get in there with a cotton swab and clean him up. I'm just gonna put the carriage as far back as it can go. Um, let me make sure I'm focused on it, just because it is kind of deep in there. Okay, that should be good enough. I don't know if I did any more damage by touching the focus, but awesome. Let's get a um, Q-tip. I got some isopropyl here. Basically going to try to get some 
isopropyl on there. And I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to squeegee the head. Make sure I get it good. Um, I'm looking at the Q-tip. I don't see much, you know, residue that's coming off here. I'm hoping it was just small enough film that was intermittent that um, that we may have just gotten with uh, the minimal wipe that we kind of did there. So hopefully that worked. Um, but yeah, the, I'm going to start reassembling this guy. I'm not going to talk through it. You saw the disassembly part, but I will kind of time lapse the reassembly part. Um, and we should be able to test this and hopefully we're good to go. Obviously I have the backup drive if all fails, but um, I'm hoping this drive is back up in working order as a result of our work here. Awesome, so that is um, together. We will hook it up and just kind of test that it works.